Hey gang, welcome back to another video here at Joe and Eddie's Garage. The bulk of my videos are about Mustangs and classic cars. If you're interested in videos like that, I suggest you hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to get more videos like this. Now let me go into some details. This Mustang is a 1968 Coupe, affectionately known as Jade. I have a whole series of videos on this car, complete build up from suspension to the engine, to floor pans, to quarter panels, all kinds of stuff that I've done to this car, and it is progressing nicely. The video that I had in mind for this next video was to work on the front fenders, because as you may see, that is the original color of the car, which is Gulfstream Aqua, and that fender has a bunch of issues, and I wanted to address those and get the, a good fitting fender on the car and get it ready for primer. However, I feel like I need to do another video. And that video is going to be about the doors for this particular car. Now the reason I'm saying this is it's easy to work on the fender, but if you don't have the door aligned and fitting the car properly, it doesn't really matter what you do at that point because when you go to put everything together, there could be a conflict. So I want to go over some details about the doors for this car. I've already done some repair videos on these up in the front corner where it had rusted out and I've painted the inside of these doors with a single stage black so I already have paint on the textured area that's going to remain but the big issue with these doors is getting them to fit the car properly I've done a video in the past on a 65 Mustang where I talked about how to fit the doors but I feel like I'm, I should do it again because if you don't know about that video that one doesn't do you any good but this one should be a good video if you're looking at how to fit the door to your car and make all the gaps look correct. So let me go into some other details. Now one of the important things about this car is these doors are original. I know there's going to be a lot of conflict with aftermarket doors. There's, there's always a problem and I've addressed that in a variety of ways where I've added material to the doors at the front edge or the rear edge or wherever I need to make it fit the car. But the advantage here is original doors. These you can't beat them. There's just nothing like having original panels for any of these cars. Now the important parts of this are what they call the reveal. That's the gaps. You know if you look at a door in a house you can shift the frame so that the door sits square in the opening. In this case you have to shift the door to make it sit square. The hinges that are on this car allow for movement fore and aft up and down, and in and out, and pivot. So basically, that's, I guess that would be four different parameters. What I want to do here is I'm going to take this door back off the car, take the hinges off, and start like I've never had it on the car before so that you can see how I make the adjustments and make the car, or make the door fit the car. Now to start this process, I'm going to remove the fender which it only has four bolts holding it in place. There's two up front and two on the top. I don't have any bolts anywhere else in the fender. Now what I want to do is remove the door from the hinges, or remove the bolts that hold the door to the hinges. Now, there will be three bolts on top and three bolts on the bottom. In my case, I'm actually missing a couple of bolts, which is not a big deal. So I only have two, I think. I have three on the top and two at the bottom. And sometimes you have to get a little creative. Because I'm using a power tool, I can't directly align with the upper bolt in this case. So I'm going through the mount bolt for the upper part of the fender.
hopefully you can see I've had my leg up against the door to keep it from moving. Set it on a stand out of the way. You can also see these hinges are rebuilt. The previous video was about the rebuild on these. So I'm going to take these hinges off. Again, I'm missing a bolt or two. Again, no real marks or anything uh, to go by. Just kind of have to put it together and start adjusting. Okay, so before I put the hinges back on, I want to talk about some things with this design. The A pillar is basically just a box, and there's plates inside here that'll move around. You can actually remove these plates if you grab them the right way and lift them up and out. Uh, they're in kind of like little tabs that hold them in place. What I like to do is either take some newspaper or tape or something and push in behind the plate to keep it from falling out whenever you go to put your bolts in. I, I've already done this and they're up in place and they're going to stay hopefully. So what I want to do is start with the bottom hinge. I'll get it in place And you can see there's a lot of play here. You can move this around quite a bit. What I want to do is try to get it kind of on the front edge, lined up with the box angle of the A-pillar here, and just snug that in place. And then I'll move on to the upper one. I know I only put two bolts in that lower. But, like I said, I'm short bolts, so I'm making do. Same thing, get the bolts started. Again, lots of play, you can move these around. So I'm going to try to line up again with that front edge of the A pillar. And you should be able to kind of see the plane of the hinges themselves, where they line up to each other and to also the recess built into the car. At this point, what I like to do is take a blanket, towel, whatever you have available, and lay it on top of the rocker panel. This helps keep the paint or anything from getting damaged when you're putting the door in place. And I'll point out this door does not have the glass in it. It does have the regulator. And I'm going to slip this into place carefully. And I can let it sit on that blanket. Then I'll try to get the bolts lined up as best I can. Keeping a leg up against it. And I will say, you can also, the door itself, the plates that are in the door, they move around as well. That's how you get the more up and down movement out of the door. At this point, that has pulled the back of the door up a little bit, 
which is not what I want, but I'm not getting crazy with making adjustments just yet. I want to get the bolts in. lower bolts I'm not going to make tight they're just in in the door right now to keep it in position and I'll show you what the current status is now let me show you this I want this corner of the door to line up with this shape of the rocker panel because that matches the shape of the fender and that's critical that you can have this lined up at the back, the door is actually sitting quite high. So you can see how much movement there is. And of course, nothing lines up. The gap at the bottom is huge. All the way at the front though, it's tight. So this is why you wanna be careful when you're moving things around. So what has to happen, combination of things, the front of the door has to come up, the back of the door has to come down. To do that, I can start adjusting a variety of things because these bolts will allow the door a little movement up and down, but these bolts will allow a lot more movement up and down. So I'll loosen up the bolts on the hinges and kind of lift them up a little bit while rotating. So if you kind of envision that, the door will come up and then the back end will go down and the front will come up just a little bit. So loosen these. Now you can see how much, hopefully you can see how much that just moved and just breaking those bolts loose. Just a little bit low. Now I want to show you how that looks. Now what I did there was I left the bottom hinge come forward, which caused this corner to come off of the rocker. And it dropped it in the back and made the gap super tight at the bottom. And of course, the gap is all out of shape going up. So now I have to go halfway. <laughs> I need to bring the bottom, say, back a little bit, try to keep the top where it's at. And this is where it helps if you have two people, but you can do it. The other thing, you know, I have the bolts snugged up in the upper hinge, so it's holding the door to the hinge itself. So most of my play right now will be in the, the movement up and down, a little fore and aft, and on the pivot with the two front hinges, or two hinges. There, I brought this one forward just a little bit. That actually created a really nice gap at the back. Just that little bit of movement. But I'm a little bit too far ahead because this corner at the bottom here, I know it's hard to show you without relocating the camera every two minutes, but the corner is still a little too far forward. You can just see it right there. It has a nice gap at the back, but I need to I need to adjust that so that corner fits the uh, rocker panel 
better. So now what I want to do is loosen up this lower bolt on the upper hinge and then loosen these two bolts and then I'll lift the back end of the door up slightly and tighten the lower bolts to get this corner closer to the rocker. That looks better. Getting closer. Now I want to loosen up both of these bolts on the top and try to bring the upper hinge aft a little bit and that'll bring this back edge down just a little bit. We'll see how that looks. Okay, I hope this is making sense. I know in my mind it makes sense, but you come back here to the back and now look at this gap. It's consistent. The body lines line up as they should. And the only difference is normally if I was going to set this door, I might set it just a little tiny bit high because there's no glass in it. When you put the glass in, it actually makes it sag just a little bit. Uh, otherwise, I can pull this blanket out of the way. And you'll notice too, I have no striker in this. Don't rely on the striker for your adjustments. The striker comes much later. You want the door to, to function on the hinges, and then the striker is lined up later just to close the door. So now I have a pretty consistent gap all across the bottom or as I call the reveal and you know this takes some practice it takes a little time uh, you know you can get the gaps right and feel pretty confident with where things are um, but just understand how you can adjust these different positions you know, like I said, you can move up and down, you can tilt back and forth, you can pivot, you can move in and out. I mean, there's all kinds of movements, so you just kind of kind of have to play with it, and you'll figure it out. I know it's really hard to explain this in a simple manner. There, it lines up really good on that rocker. Happy with that. But, anyway, now what I can do is move on to figuring out these fenders. Well, I hope you got some good information out of that. Like I said, it's really hard to explain it without having you know, somebody right there in person with you when you can make those adjustments. I can talk about it, I can do little demonstrations, but you know, it's really, it, two people it would make it a lot easier to do. Uh, I've done this quite a bit, so I'm used to doing it by myself, but little tips like the blanket or a towel, trying to understand you know, the concept of where you have to go, hopefully that all helps. But I am very happy with how this fits. Now, of course, you know, I made the quarter panel fit the door previously, and I didn't have the hinges rebuilt prior to that. But everything's rebuilt now. It's very solid. So, yeah, I am definitely happy with how this looks. But that'll be the end of this video. Uh, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all those who have been using Amazon, who have been doing Patreon for me, uh, buying t-shirts on Teespring. You know, they're still available. I hope to have out a Jade t-shirt very soon and maybe another t-shirt that I'm working on. But, yeah, that'll be it. So, until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya.
See ya. That's it. Another video coming. See ya.